What are the placement preferences when a case involves a Native American child? Hi, my name is Ryan Canoni. I'm an attorney with Worth Law Office here in Tahlequah, and I've talked about placement preferences and videos in the past, but I, it, you know, it, it's never too early to re, you know, remind us how that works again. Uh, and also, I don't believe in any of the past videos I've actually addressed um, the adoption placement preferences. So I'm going to do that in this video. So the first uh, thing I want to talk about is adoptive placement preference. So when you have a Native American child and they are being removed from their parents uh, for any reason, uh, the federal and state uh, Indian Child Welfare Act apply. There's a federal one, then there, Oklahoma has one. Uh, both of these are designed because, like I've said in other videos, uh, for a long time there was a, a federal and state policy of separating Native American children from their families and then only giving them to, at the time, uh, white families to basically strip them of everything that made them culturally Native um, to try to assimilate. It was the assimilation doctrine. Uh, this led to a lot of issues, uh, number one being the loss of culture, language, and the decimation of a lot of tribes. So the feds stepped in, made the Indian Child Welfare Act. Most states followed suit and have their own uh, one that kind of mirrors the feds. And uh, so that's where we are now. So when a child is taken from an Indian home, uh, and we're talking about adoption in this instance, let's say someone wants to adopt a Native American child, uh, the tri uh, you're going to have to have a tribal expert uh, come in or an expert witness uh, to testify that to, uh, removal of the child from the home is in their best interest. Um, that's been done to uh, safeguard the child against physical and or emotional damage. Uh, that's Those are kind of some of the magic words. I, I butchered that phrase, but you don't need to know the exact phrase for this video. Um, but that's something you have to have tes uh, testimony at the uh, hearing, uh, especially if it's if there's any type of adoption without a consent, uh, meaning that the parents are, their rights are being terminated in this situation. Now, when you are looking at placing a child in adoptive placement, uh, you still have to, there's ICWA guidelines for that. Namely, the for, there's preferences, meaning that um, there's a selection process for who should get uh, priority on getting adopt, uh, being able to adopt the child. Uh, you probably heard something about this years ago in a case, uh, it was called Baby Veronica. Uh, there was a whole lot of media attention about it when, it, uh, when they started talking about uh, ICWA and placement preferences. So if we're talking adoptive placement, your first placement preference is going to be with that child's extended family. Uh, extended family is number one. It's number one on just about all the placement preference list. Uh, and it's, usually it's number one even on non-native children. Uh, you want to try to keep the child within some semblance of that same family. Second is going to be uh, with a member of the child's own tribe. Uh, so any, if, if we're talking about a Cherokee child, we're talking about a Cherokee Nation uh, tribal family or a Cherokee Nation family who uh, wants to adopt. Third is going to be with a member of any certified tribe. And uh, so that kind of opens it up from there. Now, those are your tiers of adoptive placements. Now, like I said before, to, to kind of move from, you know, from with their parents to with extended family to with a member of their own tribe to with a member of another tribe, um, then you have to have this thing called good cause. I'll do another video. I've talked about it before, but I'll, I'll do another video explaining that more too. Uh, it's basically you have to have a written decision in court, uh, and there's a couple ways uh, that have been declared good cause in, in, in case law in the past. Now, let's say we're not talking about adoptive, but we're talking about any foster care placement. Now, foster care is extremely broad. Uh, ICWA defines it, basically, if we're not talking adoption, we're talking foster care. So when you start looking at that, you need to have, once again, extended, mem uh, extended member of the child's, uh, ah, it's been a long day, member of the child's extended family. There we go. Uh, your second is going to be a foster home that is certified by uh, the tribe, by Native American, uh, or by that child's tribe. Um, then the third is going to be a foster home uh, that is certified by a non-tribal licensing authority. This would be like DHS uh, or possibly a uh, private uh, 
place that certified the home. The third is going to be an Indian an institution that is does, uh, by a tribe or by a tribal authority uh, institution. I've never actually seen it get to that uh, because when you hit that third tier, you always have DHS, uh, especially in most of these situations, you're, you're going to have uh, a home that's either certified by the tribe or certified by DHS. And so you're not, I, I've never seen a case where it gets to that fourth tier. Uh, not that it won't, but uh, I just haven't seen that in almost eight years now of practice. So why do these matter? Well, if you are not in those pr placement preferences, then you have to go to court and fight to show that there is a good cause, there's good reason uh, for this uh, child to be placed with you. So you need an attorney that understands the Indian Child Welfare Act, but also what good cause means, like what uh, will meet what what can meet that burden of good cause. Um, people a lot of times say, well, just the removal of the child from a family they've been with. Uh, psychological um, good cause, like good cause talks about the uh, psychological is not always going to get you there. That said, there are some case law decisions out there that discuss uh, bonding and things like that. But just to say it's it's traumatic on a child uh, is not going to be enough. Just to saying it, you're going to have to kind of thread the needle through some of those decisions out there. Uh, but that doesn't mean that all hope is lost. There's a lot of uh, uh, ways you can do good cause. And tune in for my other videos when they post uh, to find more out about that. If you have questions on this, then please give us a call. Uh, you can, if, if this is involving a uh, deprived case, you can hit us up on um, CPS Investigations. Uh, sorry, CPK, CPSinvestigationdefense.com. Uh, or you can just give us a call, uh, talk to us about your case. Maybe we can help. Thank you.